Okay, we're working on the uh, second section of the glue up as we move aft in the rudder and uh, we're kind of doing a bit of a do over here. I opened the clamps up uh, after about five hours and uh, even though my shop's warm the uh, the epoxy had not fully bonded so I recoated it and uh, we'll let it sit overnight now. Um, kind of surprising I'm used to working with uh, waterproof glues and they would have all been fully set or set adequate enough to uh, break the clamp so my bad uh, learning curve on uh, laminating with epoxy leave it uh, overnight don't even threaten to go faster so the other things that I'm working on um, this morning I built the rails or the uh, main part of the fixture this is uh, the the piece or pieces those are taped together uh, and I cut and fared them uh, together so they're identical um, and that's the 40 millimeter offset that you need to run your router over and so the next thing that I'm doing uh, is building a much bigger faceplate for my router um, and it will have this is a piece of plexiglass that I had left over from uh, Companionway so I'm going to reinforce it uh, this will actually be on the top side and these will be on the bottom side close to the bit with the intention that as you work side to side and come up against the uh, uh, the templates you don't run your router bit into your template and chew it up. I saw that seemed to be a problem with uh, some of the other uh, guys that were using this technique uh, had come up. I'd seen their fixtures were getting pretty well chewed up. So this is the uh, fixture template that I took off my paper print and then I marked in the uh, foil and uh, referenced the center line and the uh, tail end mark so that I have an idea what uh, I was working to and I wanted a lot of tail end out here so that the, the base plate of the router had quite a bit of area to uh, to ride on so uh, my friend that helped me with the uh, spreadsheet extended the lines out quite a bit further than or the data so that the uh, print would uh, extend the lines further um, so the shape looks good and uh, once I get my blank fully built, I'm going to do a couple things. One, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to weigh the uh, entire oak blank when I've got it all glued up. And then I'm also going to weigh the, the old original rudder, even uh, knowing that it's saturated and rotten and whatever and I'll uh, compare that weight to the raw blank and then uh, once I uh, mill this entire foil I'm really curious uh, I'm, I, I'll bet that that uh, though that it's a third of the blank the the raw blank weight when I'm done milling I'm expecting there to be a lot of sawdust in this process and uh, that's one of the reasons that uh, I have 
gone through the bother of rather than just making the blank all one section thickness uh, and, and instead have stepped the thicknesses uh, down as it gets to the trailing edge. Um, and that's just an effort to reduce uh, the massive amount of waste that's uh, going to happen here. There's not a good way to do this, um, I don't think, but uh, I hate wasting wood and I just don't see a, a better way to, to deal with this. Uh, you know, and, and because the, the problem is, is while stepping the uh, strips down and dimension helps reduce waste it makes for a heck of a lot of bother in the glue up so yeah, that's a big trade time messing around versus uh, wasted wood so just part of the deal so when I cut this uh, template this dimension is the 40 millimeter offset on this side on the inside, I cut well inside the uh, the uh, foil shape so that there would be clearance there. You don't want that writing or touching on your foil. Uh, but some of the other things that I'm going to go back and study some of the videos is uh, is dealing with this thing in the total raw blank stage. This thing is going to want to. sit well proud and even with the uh, uh, reference points uh, you're going to have interference so I got to sort out how I want to manage the, that, this thing. I'm kind of inclined to think maybe what I'll do is hinge one end might be away uh, so once I get this fixture a little further along I'll, I'll sort that out but I'm also going to go study to see if the uh, guys that have done this before have sorted out a a good answer particularly for a foil this size this this thing being 18 and a half inches uh, total width finished and the front section is uh, in the blank is two and a half inches and this fixture is gonna you know no way it's gonna come down and contact the uh, center point line that I had in mind so I got to think through that uh, that step Okay, so I've built a, a bigger base for my router and uh, it was just checking and that'll allow me to have 14 inches of space between my uh, template supports and uh, I just happen to have some plexiglass uh, left over from uh, a companion way I had built and I reinforced it so that the uh, router doesn't try to make the uh, plexiglass sag and then these rails are intended to keep the uh, bit from getting over into the templates themselves um, I'm going to be working with both that half inch carbide bit and then uh, in the flatter sections I'll use some uh, larger bits that I have uh, that I typically use on uh, flattening big uh, slabs and whatnot for normal woodworking. Um, I wanted to put these rails uh, on the uh, base a little closer together, but it occurred to me that if I did, that it would cover my uh, screws up that attach the uh, the router to the base and I decided that would be a pain in the butt having to take those rails off every time. Um, and uh, while clear would have been better, uh, the uh, opaque or dark glass will be fine because the main thing is you want to see when you're coming up on the, the edge of the rails or you'd be able to see if you are got so much uh, chips underneath there that you need to deal with it. Um, so that'll be fine. Uh, tomorrow is uh, back to uh, making the next uh, bit of lamination. Uh, we'll join this section to the uh, larger piece over here. 
and then I guess uh, the following or tomorrow night or tomorrow evening I'll add the final uh, two bits to it um, and then start sorting out some other issues. The one that uh, that I am thinking about is how to maintain the alignment of the rails, uh, make sure that they're perpendicular to the uh, blank, and then the other thing that I want to think about is how to manage the elevation because I'm real sure that as I start uh, I need to have that uh, template uh, much higher up than uh, than where you are when you start uh, getting close to final fairing. So I'll have to sort that out. I'm thinking I'll, I'll use a series of blocks and uh, we'll see. This is a design build project like most of the ones I do so we just kind of figure these things out as we go. And uh, the other thing I think I'm going to do I'm not sure it's necessary. I have some uh, Melmine tape that I could add to this uh, surface to make it even slipperier. Um, so uh, we'll see. Might do that. It would also make it last longer if that was an issue. If I wanted to build somebody else one of these things. Okay.